Finally, Intel's answer to Apple Silicon and Snapdragon X Elites, and now even AMD is catching up with long lasting thin laptops that also have really good performance. But maybe being last is not being least. I hope to find that out with this machine right here. One of the first to drop with the new Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. Here we go. Spirit knife. Ah, good old box within a box trick. Wait, I need that. <laughs> There's another box in here. What do we got? We got a nice box. This is the Asus ZenBook, of course. This is the 14 inch variety. Nice, cute, compact. And for those of you that subscribe to the channel, this might look familiar because you've already seen it a few seconds ago, but you've also seen my full review of this one. This is the ZenBook S16. This is the one with the AMD Ryzen AI9, HX365. Oh my gosh, those names are getting crazy, especially with AI in them. Same deal here, except this is the 14 inch version with the Intel Core Ultra 7, and they both have that serra aluminum. And the reason I like it is because it feels really solid. It's not warm, it's not cold, it's cool, but it certainly feels way better than plastic. Anyway, you've probably already heard a ton about serra aluminum. The point is, no fingerprints. The only difference that I see here with the 14 inch versus the 16 inch is the 14 doesn't have the SD card reader. Well, that's not the only difference. It's also smaller, of course, but that's the only port difference. But I really wanna find out how efficient this new Lunar Lake architecture is. Really? It's a really big box for, I hope I won't be needing this for at least a couple days. Now what's been really impressive about these new Asus machines is that they feel really well made. And because of my history with Asus machines, had this one for a number of years, I haven't been a huge fan of them, the way they're built, but they're getting way better with these Zenbook. I've been pretty impressed, especially because this is an OLED screen. 120 hertz. These should be pretty standard now. I don't know why manufacturers don't make these standard yet. I suppose the battery has something to do with it because OLED screens drain more battery. And yes, we saw a prime example of that in this AMD machine because while it did outlast all the Intel machines, it did not quite catch up to the X Elite and the MacBooks. I'm gonna skip my initial impressions of this laptop because I've already done it for that laptop and they're essentially the same. So if you are interested in that, I'll link to that video down below, but I'll leave also chapters down below Low. on my test that I'm going to be performing on this thing. Don't miss the tests that are related to the battery of this thing because I already have numbers for the Intel Core Ultras from generation one. This is generation two. Ah, yes, Lunar Lake, one that's supposed to save Intel's reputation and keep them relevant in this world of high efficiency and long lasting laptops. This is a really big deal for Intel, who's been having quite a bad few years, made even more evident to everyone when Apple launched their M1 chips back in the day. And it just seems to be getting worse lately, especially with the recent desktop chip controversy. For Lunar Lake, their marketing department has been going overtime though, making promises, and they've created really big expectations. So I wanted to make sure that I use this time to really take the machine out for a spin. And I've been using it for a couple weeks. And also you've been asking for a Lunar Lake battery comparison, and I will share that shortly. So my experience with this machine, which is the Asus ZenBook S14 with the Intel Core Ultra 7 second generation 258V. And I wanted to share my software developer perspective here. Obviously, since this is an x86 platform, there's pretty much no compatibility issues whatsoever. Everything just installs and works and works very well. There were zero hangups, no choppiness at all. The software I'm running all ran smoothly, including all my developer tools, the big ones being Visual Studio and Android Studio, as well as VS Code, but VS Code runs pretty well on anything. I did at times have up to four instances of VS Code running and everything was smooth. There were also other tools that I use every day, like Notion for note-taking, Todoist for to-do lists. That's hard to say, Todoist for to-do lists. Lots of browser tabs open, although 30 might not be too many in some of your people's books. And I'm sure you let me know in the comments like you usually do. Oh, I have like 500 tabs open, 3000. No problem. I try to keep my tab usage down under normal daily use. So that's my experience. From a usability perspective, this machine does really well. The only issue I see consistently is when waking up from sleep, the machine seems to almost reboot. It doesn't just seem to wake up instantly. And this has been happening pretty consistently if I leave the machine sleeping for about a couple hours at least. Let's see what happens right now. It's been a couple hours. Yeah, so it should pop right up, but it doesn't. So I gotta press the power button and all these cars just decided to start. And there it is. Basically the machine is off. 
So not super convenient. I've even done a bunch of updates and it does not help yet. I don't know if it's a chip issue or an issue with the laptop. After a few days of use on the balanced power mode, I switched to high performance power plan, which is how I like to use my laptops. That's just a personal preference. You can use this machine fine and balanced as I did for a few days and it worked just fine. I don't know why I'm drawn to high power mode. In my mind, why would you not want to use highest performance available, right? Especially now that they can last a long time on battery. Windows 11 hides this option, by the way, so you kind of have to switch it using PowerShell commands. I made a couple of setup videos for developers where I show you how to do it. I'll link the video down below. Now I've also used this machine for regular productivity work. What I found interesting was that when I was in a Zoom call, the fans were going crazy with nothing else running in the machine but the browser, Chrome. And this definitely brought back some memories of using Intel-based laptops and having a persistent noise in my ear. After using silent machines for a few years, the fan noise really stuck out like a sore thumb. I even had to check the temperature to make sure the machine was okay. And at nearly 34 degrees Celsius, it's not terrible, but certainly a bit warmer than some of the other machines I have here. In any case, neither the noise nor the temperature are deal breakers. It's just something that only someone who tests a lot of laptops notices, this guy. But if you are doing audio production on the side of programming like i do sometimes then watch out this is not a machine for you it has a pretty loud fan in it and you will notice it better get a macbook air or something and as soon as my zoom call was over the fan stopped and all was good again what i love about these new generation of chips is that i have not ever had to run to the nearest outlet in a desperate attempt to save my state as the computer threatened to shut down which is how it used to be with old intel machines so from that subjective point of view of battery life the peace of mind alone is already worth the upgrade to the newest set of chips and i say chips plural because pretty much now everybody is on that level we got apple silicon we got snapdragon we got amd and now we have intel as well i'll get to the objective measurements in a bit but i just want to say that intel did accomplish that goal of having this machine be efficient i just got to say that in order to get there it looks like intel did have to sacrifice quite a bit in the performance area for example the previous generation of core ultra 7 155h had eight more physical cores than this machine so they've removed a bunch of cores it had a larger cache size and more powerful integrated graphics, but it also ran hotter. And the core count, that really brings this machine's Geekbench scores down quite a bit. But to Intel's defense, this is the different design and the battery life and efficiency is the most important metric here because that's what they're going for. However, there's one characteristic that Intel just can't seem to get away from and that's how it operates plugged in versus not plugged in. The Geekbench scores speak for themselves, where we get these results for single core and multi-core scores while plugged in. That's already not super impressive for a modern chip compared to, say, Apple Silicon, X Elite, and even AMD. But when we unplug this computer and run Geekbench, the scores just take a nosedive. So yeah, Intel better get on that, as I've been saying for many years now. They're getting better, I guess. We still have noise, we still have heat. We've taken away cores so that we can have better efficiency but let's take a look at that efficiency now. The battery test. Using the same exact automated battery test that writes code, builds code, runs code, and then does a bunch of other things like takes notes, operates other applications, the browser, and of course watches YouTube videos. So a nice little combination of tasks to simulate a real world programmer's day in half hour increments. During that time, I also measure how many times it can run a really intense Python program that uses all the cores. It's called the Mandelbrot test. And I do that for one minute out of the 30 just to see how many iterations we get so that we can calculate the efficiency of the machine later on the first test i did on balanced power this is the way the machine comes right out of the box most people won't change their settings their power plan or their power mode so this is the battery life you'd expect from somebody that doesn't tinker with the machine and for the balanced power mode results i only have three machines because i was doing high performance measurements before which i'll get to in a second the machine lasts just over 540 minutes which is actually really respectful it sits right about where the Zenbook F16 with Ryzen AI 9 365, but it does not touch the X Plus machine, which lasts a very long time, 930 minutes. So Snapdragon beats this hands down in balanced mode, but it's a slightly different story when it comes to high performance. They actually do pretty well in high performance, beating out, of course, all the Meteor Lake generation laptops by a lot. 
so the Core Ultra in high performance mode lasted 300 minutes, which outlasted the Galaxy Book 4 Edge X Elite, my MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M2 Max, and that ZenBook S16 with the Ryzen AI9. Of course, those other machines are all 16 inch machines, so they have larger screens that suck up more battery. This one is a 14 incher, but compared to some of the other 13 inchers like the MacBook Air, this comes pretty close. It does not beat out the MacBook Air or or the Surface Laptop 7 with the X Plus or the Surface Laptop 7 with the X Elite. And that Asus ProArt PZ13 with the X Plus chip that killed it in the balanced power mode, it does not do as well in high performance. So here it has about the same curve as the other X Plus and X Elite machines. So just about half an hour longer than this ZenBook with the Intel. Now, what about efficiency? Let's take a look at that because this takes into account the work done as well. On balanced power plan, this is a little bit more efficient than the Ryzen AI 9 365, which again is the same thing, but the 16 inch version of this chassis and obviously the Ryzen chip instead of the Intel chip. They're very close though, but the X plus beats that out. Let's take a look at the high performance power plan. This is how I would use the machine again because I like high performance and this lines all of them up nicely. Thanks for the commenters that pointed that out, by the way. We're Where's our machine? Well, it's right in the middle. What beats it out? A few X Plus machines and the MacBook Air M3 and a couple of X Elite machines. What does it beat? Well, it beats the VivoBook S15 with an X Elite, which is interesting. And it beats the Galaxy Book 4 Edge, that's 16 inch with the X Elite chip as well. And it beats the M2 Max MacBook Pro. And of course the previous generation Intel machines. So yeah, it is actually pretty nice. It's pretty efficient and Intel did a good job getting it there. Overall, if if you need an x86 machine, if you know you can't use Windows on ARM and that's going to give you some issues based on the software that you're running, and you can find lots of videos on my channel about that and compatibility. And if you don't care about a little bit of extra heat and a little bit of extra noise, then these are pretty good machines. I do like the new build of the ZenBooks with the Serra Aluminum. Nobody had these long enough to see how long the Serra Aluminum will last at this point or how it'll handle stains and coffee stains over a long period of time either. That's going to be a more of a long-term review. But from using this pretty much daily for the past couple of weeks, I would say I actually enjoyed myself on this machine. Is it going to replace my M2 MacBook Pro? Well, no, the M4 Max MacBook Pro will hopefully replace it soon. We will see. Stay tuned for those reviews. And if you did like this review, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.